What's going on, y'all? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another post fight analysis video. All right, y'all. Tisha Torres versus Angela Hill 2, the sequel, right? I mean, going into this fight here, um, my honest thoughts, I really didn't think much was going to change on Angela Hill's part. You know, I ain't trying to bash her as a fighter or anything, but, you know, just seeing the level that she's fought at and the level that she's kind of struggled at as well and still score some wins at, you know, I just kind of thought that, you know, that wasn't going to be enough against Tisha Torres. You know, I think Tisha Torres, you know, throughout her career, she's faced some hard competition and, you know, she's faced some hard lessons, you know, um, not to say Angela Hill hasn't, but I think with the hard lessons that Tisha Torres was learning, you know, she was able to uh, go in and find out what she needed to work on, you know, and I think that we've been seeing a, a very much improved Tisha Torres. You know, she's been able to really utilize her physical strength a little bit more. She's sitting down on her shot. She's being a little bit more aggressive. And I, I think she's really making up for being shorter than a lot of these fighters. You know, um, you know, I, that, that's the one thing I said, like as a short fighter, you know, coming in at like five foot one, five foot two, you got to be able to throw overhand rights. You got to be a little bit more aggressive and you got to be quick. You got to be quick on the draw. You got to be first, you know, or you're going to get controlled by a taller, longer fighter. But with that being said, Angela Hill in this fight really did not use her length. She was really not using her length and she was not using straight shots like I was talking about in a previous video that I dropped. And like I said, look, if you don't have the power to knock somebody out, you have to be a point fighter. You have to master that point fighting style. You have to be a chaotic combination puncher and you have to take rounds by overworking some, outworking a fighter. You know, and I think going into this fight here, Angela Hill just didn't really grasp that. You know, she was either going to need to be a submission artist or, like I said, a, a flurry type fighter that was just going to take rounds with, you know, flurries and, you know, just constant combinations. And, you know, she just really was just plodding, plodding through the motion in this fight. I mean, real quick, going back and look at the first round right away. Opening minute, Tisha Torres opened up with a nice body attack, you know, landing like four good body kicks right away and using flurries just to control early. You know, she was staying on the back foot just a little bit, but she was still controlling the center of the octagon. You know, Hill, she was able to get a little trip in this fight in the, in the first round, but didn't do much with it because, you know, she's not really a grappler. So Tisha Torres just showed, showcased the strength, got back to her feet, you know, was able to wrestle, way, wrestle her way back up and go right back to landing some nice kicks to the leg and being very effective with it, mixing in the right hand, like I said, stepping in with the right hand and just coming over the top of the low left of Angela Hill. Angela Hill not establishing a jab, you know, not really establishing a jab this round, just doing a lot of following, fighting behind Tisha Torres. You know, Hill, to me, needed straight punches, straight punches to keep the, the shorter fighter back. So easy win, uh, easy first round, you know, uh, for uh, Tisha Torres, you know, just beating her to the punch using uh, combinations. Second round, Torres going right back to the body, you know, nice side kicks and front kicks to keep Angela Hill back. Uh, just better at keeping range. You know, the shorter fighter was better at keeping range than Hill. Hill was landing some nice right hands, but nothing really set up by the left and being effective. You know, Tisha Torres, she was able to land her right hand effectively off of the leg kicks, you know, using her leg kicks like a jab. So when she would throw nice leg kicks to the body, she would come back with the right hand. So instead of utilizing a jab for Tisha because he's a little bit shorter, she was using her kicks. That's how she was, you know, getting her full extension, you know, using kicks and then throwing in the right hands. Nice, you know, just some overall nice improvements and adjustments by Tisha Torres. Hill, she tried for the takedowns, but once again, Torres, she's just too strong, just turning Hill, controlling the clinch. Hill, to me, it just really looked like she was out of the fight at this point. You know, she wasn't really scoring anything big, anything significant, just letting Angela, uh, just letting Tisha Torres control her. Last round, Hill, she wanted to press the action a little bit more, but still not landing anything big or landing any jabs, not landing any jabs or any teep kicks of her own. You know, her being a Muay Thai fighter, I want to see teep kicks. You know, saying like JoJo Carter, well, she'll throw them. You know, she's a Muay Thai fighter. She'll throw them out there. Joanna, she'll flick them out there. She'll kick you right in the face. But Hill was just kind of like a little bit flat footed, I think, and just kind of plodding through, just plodding through. Because at this point, she needed a knockout. She needed to land some big overhand rights or she needed to take this to the ground and, and look for a submission. Because Torres was really just having her way at this point, picking her punches. The game plan was her switching to southpaw, landing a right jab. You know, landing the right jab and just switching the southpaw to, to land the um, the bigger uh, left kicks. You know, so uh, I just think that overall, even in this round, if Angela Hill would have started jabbing more, more power shots would have opened up and she probably could have got Tisha down or, you know, even scored a stoppage if she looked for those good uh, those good counters like she was doing against Claudia Gedalia. So uh, overall, man, um, nobody really went for broke in that last round. You know, Hill and Torres, you know, um, nobody really was like, you know, going toe to toe. I think Torres, she fought a, a, a smart fight, 
which was cool with me. You know, she, you, if you got the rounds in the bag, no need to go after and try to go in for the kill if you know you're not going to knock somebody out. So, yeah, man, I had a 30-27 for Tisha Torres. Just a nice game plan executed. And like I said, just so much more improved on her um, on what on what she's had before. You know, just coming forward a little bit more, not staying on the back foot, committing to harder punches and just utilizing, you know, those those legs, you know, there's power in those legs. And she's starting to throw with more uh, authority on. Them. So, yeah, from here, I think Tisha Torres deserves to fight up, you know, no more, no more fighting down. You know, I think that with three fight winning streak, she deserves to fight somebody in the top 10. You know, I don't know if Claudia Gadelli is ever going to come back, you know, but there's, um, uh, some fighters available like Jan Jaunan, that's number four. You know, that that's definitely a good fight for Tisha Torres to showcase her wrestling in. So I'm looking at that fight. Or let's see. Yeah, Claudia Gadelia. Yeah, Claudia Gadelia. If Claudia Gadelia is good, you know, that's a good fight. Or Jan Jaunan. But let me know, guys, in the comment section what y'all think. And Angela Hill, what do y'all think from here? Uh, is she still good to fight, fight on in the UFC at the level she's at and just be a gatekeeper, you know, at this low level? What do y'all think, guys? Uh, I think retirement is too hard. That's too harsh for one um, Angela Hill. I don't think she's ready to retire yet. She's not really shop worn. You know, she just fights at that level where um, she can still give uh, these unranked fighters a good, a good scrap. You know what I mean? But if she really wants to get into the top ten or like the top five, improvements got to be made. Improvements have got to be made, man. I'm, I'm just not really seeing any improvements on her striking as well. Like I said, man, too, too loopy with the right hand. Not enough straight shots. You know. So, yeah, man, we'll talk about it more tonight. Uh, Combo Breaker 99, I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.